So writing is an essential skill for every PhD student, but as we all know, it's also a huge source of stress for many. And one of the reasons why it's so stressful is that very few people are actually taught how to do it. So I remember when I was a PhD student, it was just kind of expected that you should be able to write. And although I had a great supervisor who was very supportive and gave feedback, there really wasn't anything in the way of formal training. And a lot of the guidance that does exist treats writing as this kind of mysterious process where you have to turn off your thinking brain, get words down on the page, and hope that somehow you can get something that you can then turn into a coherent text. But actually, writing is a skill that you can learn, and it is entirely possible to carefully and deliberately construct a narrative without having to go through the endless cycle of drafts that so many students experience. So in this video, I'm going to run through four key aspects of good thesis writing, and if you stay till the end, I'll also talk a little bit about my new PhD thesis writing masterclass. So the first and most important aspect of good thesis writing, the foundation on which everything else is built, is your research. So if your research is good, all your writing has to do is communicate it clearly. It doesn't have to be some amazing Pulitzer Prize winning masterpiece. It just has to be good enough to get the message across. But if your research is badly designed or badly executed, you might be able to write your way out of trouble. But a good examiner will see right through it. So my view has always been that your research has to take priority over writing because it's the foundation of everything. A lot of people start writing chapters before completing their research, thinking that it'll save time and then they can just slot the results in. But writing with the assumption that you know what the results will be is never a good idea. So prioritize the research, get the results and the content that you need, and then we can focus on communicating that research through writing. Then once you have that foundation, there are three elements or three pillars of good thesis writing that I'd like to talk about. So the first of the three pillars is confidence. Specifically, this is the confidence to make decisions in your writing about what you actually want to present. So one of the reasons why writing is difficult is that there are infinite possible ways to put words on the page. So every word, every sentence, every paragraph, every reference is a choice that you make as a writer out of those infinite possibilities. And everything that you leave out is a choice too. So you can't cover everything. And so you have to make clear decisions about both what you want to say and what you want to leave out. And if you avoid making these fundamental decisions, it's impossible to write with confidence. If you don't know what you want to present, then you can't select your sources. You can't finish sections. You can't build an effective argument and you'll ultimately be overwhelmed by the possibilities because you have no constraints, because you've made no decisions. A lot of people mistake this for perfectionism, but really it's just indecision. So it takes some confidence to make these kinds of choices, but fortunately, confidence is something that you can practice. So if you make even just one decision, you'll find it easier to make following decisions because you know what you're trying to achieve and so you reduce the number of possibilities. Now a lot of people worry about making the decision to leave things out, effectively covering less, 
and how that might make their thesis weaker. But actually, the opposite is true. So if you add more just for the sake of adding more, hoping that by including enough, you'll cover what the examiner wants to see, it'll be a confusing mess and your actual message will become diluted. But if you're clear about what you want to say, you can make a strong, focused case, sticking to the point and only including the best and most relevant material. And if you have that confidence in what you want to say, the examiner is much more likely to have confidence in you. So the second key pillar of good PhD thesis writing is understanding structure. So another um, common difficulty in writing is knowing how to take the tangled mess of ideas and knowledge in your head and ordering them in a way that someone else can follow. But fortunately, there are guiding principles that you can learn that can help you to create a coherent structure. And these principles are universal. They can be applied to any research project from any academic field, and they're actually quite simple. Now, they do take a little bit of time and practice to master, but once you get it, it can make a ridiculous difference to the quality of your writing. So the basic idea of structure is to think about the relationships between ideas in terms of causes and effects or needs and problems and responses to those needs and problems. For example, when you're writing about your research methods, instead of just describing all of the things that you've done, you can think about them as responses to the problems that you need to solve in order to conduct your research. Now, this might be quite simple. For example, saying in order to understand A, we need a way of measuring B, and this can be done using technique C, which might be a standard technique. So technique C is your response to that need. Pretty simple. But in many research projects, you have to adapt your methods, not only to the specific needs of your projects, but also to specific constraints. In other words, your methods are a response to those needs and those constraints. For example, in order to understand A, we need a way of measuring B. Typically, this would be done using technique C. However, this method is usually applied under some set of specific conditions, but because this research will take place under other conditions. Now, without even finishing that sentence, you have some idea of what's coming next. It's obvious from the way it's been set up that the project needs some kind of modification of the standard technique, um, or it needs some kind of alternative technique. So good writing, the kind of writing that just carries you along, does this. It sets up an expectation in the reader without them even realizing it. So the conclusion feels natural. It doesn't feel like an effort to read, even if there's a lot of information and technical detail. And this general idea of setting up causes and effects or problems and responses can be applied to any section of your thesis, whether that's introductions, literature reviews, everything. When you understand how to do this, then you'll be able to write a very good first draft, which is then much easier to edit. The third pillar is problem solving. So even when you make confident decisions and you understand structure, you'll still inevitably face problems in your writing. Now, a lot of writing advice tells you to just keep writing whenever you face a problem, but all this does is save the problem for later while training the habit of running away from difficulties. So it's much better to learn how to cope with and how to solve 
the different problems that arise. Now, the understanding of structure and the ability to make confident decisions helps, but there are also specific tactics and techniques that you can use depending on the situation. Now, there are too many to go into here, although I do have a video on writer's block, which I'll link to up here somewhere, that covers some of them. But the simplest and most important of these is to simply slow down and give yourself some time to think, to calmly consider your options and to make a decision. This goes against the vast majority of writing advice, but there's no need to write in a panic. And every writing problem is solvable if you give yourself the chance. And the more you do that, the better you'll get at it. And ultimately, this is where the satisfaction of writing truly lies. So if you ever do any kind of puzzle, like Wordle or Sudoku or anything, you'll know that it feels really good to struggle a little and find a solution. And if you want to enjoy writing, taking the time to solve these kind of problems is key. So each of these three pillars helps to reinforce the others. So if you have a confident mindset and you decide what you want to communicate, it makes the structure and the problem solving much easier. If you understand structure, it helps your confidence and it helps with problem solving. And if you know how to solve problems in your writing, again, it helps your confidence and it can help you to reinforce the structure of your text. So over the coming months, instead of talking about PhDs in general, I'm going to refocus this channel almost exclusively on academic writing. I'm gonna publish a lot of free content, but I'm also launching a PhD thesis writing masterclass where I'll be giving personalized guidance and feedback. So this is for those of you who have already got that foundation, where you've done your research and you not only want to get your thesis done, but you want to submit a thesis that you can be proud of and maybe even enjoy the process. So I'll put a link with more details in the description below. As always, like and subscribe and share and all that usual stuff because it really does help me to grow this channel and it helps other people to find this video. So that's all for me. Thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you next time.